are we live? We're live now. Yes, we we're are. live. We're hey, live. everybody. We're live. We're live. We're live. We, and we're we are live. live. We are live and in color uh, coming through your stereo. Uh, hi, guys. It's it's Nick and Justin. It's Thursday. It's not Wednesday. I know it's weird. Um, and uh, my plans that I was supposed to have yesterday fell through anyway. anyway. Oh. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, but we're here. It's been a minute. And uh, glad years. Yeah. Years. yes, uh, what's up, Lamontre, Sam, Ryan, John, hey, Sarah, what's what up, up Dylan, what's up, Sarah? Um, yeah, guys, uh, it's been a minute, but we are here. And uh, yeah. Justin and I were just kind of talking before we got started here about how like things have just been kind of hectic in life recently. So today is a really good opportunity for he and I to just kind of. I don't know. Just, just talk. Just just get back into the swing of things. There's a lot that's happened over the last month or so that yeah. I specifically want to talk to Justin about, and I want to talk with you guys about because I haven't, you know, haven't we haven't done a live stream in a while. So, Justin, first and foremost, what's been up, man? I see you've been picking up some movies recently. Yeah, picking up movies. Uh, life is life is pretty good. You know, life is overall great, but you know, it comes with the the ups and the downs, the hecticness and all of that stuff. Uh, and like, I'm not, we're not in a relationship, but like, I am talking to somebody and it's like going really well. Why did you not text me and tell me how because, many years have I been saying I need to know? Well, I, well, I should have texted you, but like, we're just, we're, we're, we're friends, right? Well, we're, we've been friends for a long time. And now we're, we re well, about like two months ago, we, uh, finally told each other, Hey, I really like you. You really like me. And, uh, we're going to see w where it goes. That's awesome. No, that's I know. Awesome, I should have texted you, but I don't want to. It's not like a jinx or anything like you that. You just didn't want to break my heart. You didn't, didn't want to break, break your heart. heart. Yeah. I don't want to break your heart. So, but that's been that. That's been a plus. Um, work's been good. Work's been great. Uh, besides, besides my car going completely kaput last week, and I didn't have a car for like almost a well, yeah, almost a whole week, and I had to get rides from everybody, and I was like, ah. Very stressed out with that. Um, Did you get a new one? No, the, no, it's not completely like completely gone. It was some wheel issues that we were having. Mm -hmm. um, okay, but uh, I got it fixed, and everything is great. And uh, yeah, so things are better. Things are looking up. Things are looking up. So well, that, that's good. I'm that's good. And Katrina says I came for Maxine, stayed for Ryan 1988's Love you. Life. Thank yes, you. no, I Here look Justin. Justin knows I've been at the forefront for a long time now of saying, hey, you know, you need to find yourself, you need to find yourself a good guy and, uh, you know, with similar interests and, I, and I'm rooting for you. And I know there were times where he got down on himself, but I I, I knew, I knew Justin was going to come out of it. And I know you don't want to jinx it. We're not jinxing it, guys. Okay. They're not like getting married tomorrow, but so far so good. And that's awesome. And I'm very, very happy for you because Thank you. there's there's nothing like that feeling. There really isn't. So, yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I, you know, he makes me really happy, and we uh, we don't get to see each other a lot, but you know, we text pretty much every day or talk every much pretty day. And like a month ago, we just he came over and we really just sat for two and a half hours, talked about life, caught up with life, and held hands for like two and a half hours and just, you know, talk. Oh, you're going to, you're going to get cooties if you do that. Oh, I know. Yeah. It's fine. Okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. But you know, it was great. And uh, we're going to plan to hang out again soon. So. Well, have That's you caught, day. have you, have you made your way to the theater recently at all to see anything? What did I see recently? I saw Dune part two, which was amazing. Uh, I dare say masterpiece. I am going to say masterpiece. Um, and then I saw Ghostbusters Frozen Empire and I really enjoyed it. I wanted to love it, but I did really enjoy the movie. Okay. Um, I didn't think it was as good as Afterlife or the first two movies, but 
it was definitely a solid movie and uh, I really enjoyed it. So, uh, okay. and I'm going to go see the first Omen this upcoming Sunday. So I will be seeing but it. I was going to ask you, I don't know if you and I have ever really talked about that at length. Uh, what mm -mm. are you, are you a big Omen fan? Like the original, where does that rank for you just in terms of like all time? Is it a movie that you all hold time. high regard? Not like an exact ranking, but like, are you a big lover of it? Oh, yeah. I'm a big lover of it. It, it was one of the first horror movies that made me fall in love with horror movies. Um, and I would catch it on TV like constantly. Like every time AMC had it playing, I would watch it. And I would stop everything and watch the movie. Um, and then, of course, got the... I remember when the special edition DVD got... DVD came out and I bought that and... I've had so many editions of that movie over time. And now I have this Scream Factory box set with the whole series. And I would say I love the first one. And overall, I, I do really enjoy the series. Some of the movies are hit and miss, but I find them overall to be pretty entertaining. Cool, cool. I, 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 I like I like uh, Omen 2. Damien, I, I, I like that one a lot. I do. I love that movie. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, a lot. Of, some people may not know this, uh, but The Omen 4, uh, hello, Dominique Othman and Gerard of Halloween yeah. 5 fame. Not as bad as everybody says it is. It's, I, not. it's I, not. I really enjoy that. I'm also one that loves the remake. And actually, I saw the remake the day it premiered, which was June 6th on the sixth day. Mm -hmm. in 2006. 2006 yeah yeah and there was there was a line like outside the theater to see this movie like my local theater you know when a movie came out it, it would get packed and if, especially it was like opening weekend mm -hmm. and i just remember there was a line outside the door just to kind of get in to see this movie so you know over time a lot of people don't really like it as much now but i i still love the movie so well, uh, hey, least favorite. Part three is my least favorite. I was, I was gonna, I was gonna reveal a secret to you, but real quick, shout out to Mike. How you doing, buddy? Uh, very, very happy to well, see you Mike. here. Uh, don't worry, uh, we've been absent too, so it's all, it's all good. Uh, you oh, guys want to yeah. know? You guys want to know a secret truth that I have, Justin? Is Omen Three your favorite? I've actually never seen the remake. You've never seen the remake? Now, no. I will say this. It's not I heard I always heard really bad things about it. Not a bad movie. I personally don't think it's a bad movie. And I gotta tell you the truth though, Justin. A bit what up, Akeem? How you doing, man? Hello. Um I'll tell you the truth. I was never, and I said this to Christian right before the first Omen came out, and he thought it was blasphemy. I was never a big fan of the original. That's not to say that I don't like it. I do. It's just for me, it's not like uh in my opinion, like it, where I hold it in high regard, it's not like the exorcist or, or Halloween or something yeah. for me where, although I know it is a cultural touchstone and I know it's a classic in its own right, of course, but I just never viewed it in the same way. I, I right before the first, the day before the first Omen came out, I actually watched it again. Cause I hadn't seen it in years. And I was just like, you know what? It's, I don't know. It, it's fine, I guess. But like, it's, it's just not I one that I find that. myself gravitating to towards and, and re-watching and um i you know i don't know uh it, so i never saw the remake uh, and, and then you know people might go old oh, and why did you you know why why did you uh go see the first omen then well one because we're in a we're in a weird time right now it, you know not a lot of horrors coming out right now at the beginning of the year that's normally how it mm -hmm. is and the ones you do get aren't necessarily always great yeah uh, so I was like, I want to cover it for my channel, but it was the early buzz about it that I was like, wow, everybody's saying this is really good. I was I'm like, okay, sure. I'm going to go see it. Justin, it was phenomenal. It's my, my favorite, favorite horror movie since X. And um, Really? Wow. Yes. yes. Oh yeah, I, like, I liked I'm it that enough. much. Yeah. Well, I'll say this when it comes to the original Omen. You know, it's, it's a film that I feel over time doesn't get enough talk like i think it's one of those movies we have the exorcist we have rosemary's baby we have so many other you know classic horror movies that people talk about that you know 
I'm so happy we have a new Omen movie because one, everybody should go see it. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm going to go see it Sunday. But also now people can go back, rewatch the first movie or watch it for the first time. And maybe it will have a new light for people. Because again, when I saw it as a kid or, you know, young teenager, it just blew my mind loved the movie and over time i'd watch it over and over and over again but you know it kind of just slowly started drifting away where not enough people talk about it it's loved yeah. it's considered a classic but not enough people talk about it does that make sense yeah and, and christian actually says that he prefers it to the exorcist which kind of blew my mind because i was like i don't know man the exorcist is no but different strokes different folks i get it also right. it, it you know it's it's and I do want to say really quick, I don't want this to get lost in the shuffle. Yeah, Mike, um, I had heard about Dave uh from Savage uh Zombie Reviews. I that is tragic. I mean, and I, I'm sorry for your loss and to anybody watching that that was a fan of his and to you know his friends sorry and his family. Um, it's just terrible. It's 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 just terrible. I, I you know, anytime somebody passes away early like that, unexpected like that, so young. Um you know, it's, it's a tragedy always. And so I'm, I, again, I'm sorry for your loss, man. And, uh, to everybody in this community that, uh, whose lives, uh, he touched, uh, truly. So there's the link to his channel guys. Uh, Mike put it in the chat, follow, follow that link to Dave's channel, throw a sub his way. Um, and D Parker, that's, that's, that's what I was just saying. It's Christian, Christian agrees. Now I will say though, um, I loved, I loved X in a different way than I loved oh, yeah. uh, the first Omen, but uh, it is very, very relevant now. And I'm just going to call it out for what it is. And if this offends anybody watching, I really could give two shits. Uh, honestly, one of the things that I liked so much about the first Omen is its commentary on the church and on yeah. organized religion as a whole and uh, how it is specifically very concerned with women's bodies. Um, and, uh, I, as someone who is a proponent of in any way, shape or form, the government should never be, or government religion should never be telling us regulating what we do with our lives. We are individuals. You know, I've always believed that. I think a lot of people do less government involved in my life is better for me, like, and better for all of us. And the same thing goes with religion. And, and so the, the commentary in the movie on like how oppressive the church is to these these female nuns and stuff is really, really relevant, especially nowadays. Um, and so that kind of commentary was really poignant to me and, and really powerful. But the movie, Arkasha Stevenson, this was her directorial debut feature film wise. She'd never done a feature film before. That's My interview God. With her. Yeah. Justin, she directed the shit out of this movie. I love that. It is it looks so good and there are moments where you are she, she really uses the camera well to tell the story and uh -huh. and I love that. It doesn't feel like a prop. It feels like it is helping tell the story, but furthermore, there are moments where you would in a Conjuring Universe movie where they do a jump scare and it mm -hmm. looks like it's going to be a jump scare but it's not. It's and it's it's really really cool. I, I I was very very impressed with her work, and I hope to see her go on to do more things, thank specifically you. in the horror genre. Uh, Savoy, thank you so much oh, for the four ninety nine super chat. Looking forward to a new Blair Witch. Love the entire series. Omen four is awesome. Congratulations, Justin. Yes, thank yeah, you, boy. Thank you. And yes, we're four underrated. We've got yes, more people are saying they really enjoy it. And 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 let me let me tell you. We're we're gonna get we're gonna get into all this news, but let's start it off with what I put in the title. Justin, the trailer for Maxine came oh. out. I'm sure you've watched it. What were your thoughts? I've seen, I think, like five times now. Um, I loved it. I've only I, watched it once, believe it or not. Well, I've watched only it watched it once. once. I've watched it, I think, five times, maybe four, but like I've watched it numerous times, and I loved it. I soaked it in. I was like, this is awesome. I love I love the direction that they're going with. I mean, me and my buddy talked about it and we were like, are they gonna make are they gonna make Maxine the killer? Like, is she gonna go and like, you know, kill everybody who gets in her way from her acting career? And it doesn't seem like that. And I love the idea of like this, I think it's the hill hillside strangler idea. I think that's who the killer was. The um, night stalker. The night, the night stalker. stalker. Yeah, Richard Ramirez. Yeah. 
And I, I really love the trailer and I love the cast. The cast was perfect in this movie. And uh, I love that. Like now that a lot of people have seen Pearl and have seen X, they want to like really get involved with Ty West's work. And you have a lot of names in this. So, but no, love the trailer. Absolutely. Love the music, everything about it. Oh yes. The yeah. Bates Motel stuff. Awesome. Loved it. I see. I don't want to get too much into it, guys, uh, in the like specifics of the trailer, because I actually recorded a video yesterday that I'm going to edit tonight and then release on my channel tomorrow. And it's just going to be five things I want out of Maxine. That's going to be the title of the video. I gave five things that I really want to see from this movie. And the Bates Motel thing uh, is, of course, in that I have a Bates Motel sign in my family room. Uh, I adored the TV series. I love the psycho franchise. Right. Like it is, yeah. it's very, very important to me. So I, yes, I, I'll get into that in that video uh, tomorrow on my channel, but I, yeah, I mean, I really, really, really liked the trailer as well. And I think that they were giving red herrings in the trailer. Like the night stalker is going to be a red herring for sure. He's not going to be the killer in this movie, but he yeah. happens to be killing at the same time in Los Angeles. So people are like, is it the night stalker? Like there's some really cool shit in there. The Bates motel, you know, oh, shot. Yeah, I I, I'm just kind of like, how is this going to play? Like, is this in the same universe or she's in Hollywood? Like, is this the set? The yeah. yeah. So I'm like, and I, I expanded upon that in the video I got coming out tomorrow. But like, there was just so much about it that I that I really really enjoyed. But above all else, this movie looks to be completely tonally different from X and from Pearl. And I love that because we're gonna have a trilogy of three movies that are completely different styles. And I, I think that's gonna be awesome. And by the way, Mia Goth looked she looked incredible in this trailer. Oh yeah. Just, oh yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, like you said, I love that, that every film has had a different style and look. And that's what you want with a franchise is you want, or a trilogy franchise, whatever it may be, you want each movie to look and feel different. And that's what I I, I love about all of these movies that we're getting from Ty West. And, um, and Ty West is genius. Like, I love, I've loved him ever since House of the Devil. Yep. In 09. And Innkeepers is like one of the most underrated, underappreciated movies. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I love I love what he's done with this trilogy. So I'm excited to see this. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's I, I, Ty West can do no wrong in my eyes. He just, I agree. He yeah, I agree. I, agree. I, have, I have no reason to believe that this movie's not going to be a banger. I'm sure it's going to be. I'm just going to go on record as saying this. I don't really think this is like a hot take or anything. This is going to be the most successful of, of all three, yes. simply just because it's coming out in the middle of summer and uh, it's the, the marketing for it and, and the tone and the style it's an eighties glitzy, glamoury slasher. Like it's just going to play well. It's going to do well. Enough. And word yeah. of mouth. I mean, I mean, since Pearl, those two previous movies have become very well known and people have seen them and they're loving them and they're talking about them. And a lot of people, I, what has it been two years? I think two years since the announcement of Maxine. So, I mean, it's, it's, there's been a lot of buildup for it. So yeah, there has, <laughs> that's, I'm excited. that's an understatement. I, I think the, I think the internet was waiting with bated breath for, for this trailer. I know I was. I and, was. You know, oh. Here we were in, in April, and I'm like, the movie comes out in three months, and we haven't seen anything from it. Like, come on, give us something. So I'm glad they Very did. Excited. Very excited. Uh, Ryan, Justin and I talked about that last month, uh, the Alien Romulus trailer. Um, did we talk about we, Oh, we didn't. We didn't? No, it's been a long time since we've been. Okay. We haven't even talked about Scream 7. Okay, well. No, I thought we did in our last one. We talked about Scream 7. Yeah, we, we talked about Scream 7. Yes, okay, we, we have talked about it then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Feels like it's been forever. Um, I, I thought we had talked about Alien Romulus, but I mean, I, I just want to say we didn't get a lot from it. But no, it looks, perfect. yeah, it looks like Fede Alvarez is going back to horror with Alien. Going back to that genre. Um, also, I just love the fact that like he gave us a te the teaser trailer without showing a lot. Like you saw a glimpse uh, parts of the movie, but there's going to be so much more with this film. 
And I'm also excited that it's going to theaters instead of originally it was just going to be a streaming movie. Like they're actually going to release this in theaters. And I'm so excited for that. Yeah, same. I don't know why. I just don't know why sometimes. I, well, I know why during like COVID and everything, how it was like, oh, well, we need to build up streaming. We need to prop up streaming. We need to give people a reason to uh, want to watch our stuff when they won't go to the theater. But like now it's just like, People really got caught up in the streaming wars during COVID, yeah. thinking that streaming was going to be the future. And it's no. actually the opposite now. Physical media is no. becoming even more big than streaming is now. It's so. yeah, like like streaming is always going to be a thing. I'm not. I'm it not is. trying to, to. No, and I love it. I mean, I, yeah, I, yeah. It's just like people. It was. It was never going to be the end all be all. It was no. convenient and safe for the times, but people didn't want to stay locked in their homes forever. And no. uh, rightfully so. So that was, yeah. I mean, so yeah, I'm I'm excited to see this on a, on the big screen. I, I really, really Me am. Too. And I guess Justin, I'll just ask you about this. They announced this like an hour ago. Did you know that uh, Interstellar is coming back to IMAX this fall? Oh, in seventy God. millimeter, seventy millimeter. Oh, I can't wait. Interstellar. Yep. If y'all don't know, my favorite Christopher Nolan movie. I don't know. See it? Oh yeah. Oh gosh, yes! Like, it's gonna be it's gonna celebrate it, its tenth anniversary this fall, which is crazy because I saw that movie. I think I saw it eight times in theaters. That was one I saw it. Make eight. it nine. Make it nine. <laughs> I maybe I'll even make it ten. Who knows? Let's see. Maybe I'll go see it twice in theaters again. But yeah, Interstellar is my favorite Nolan movie and just one of my favorite movies of all time. I think it's in my top ten favorite movies of all time. Yeah, you asked you asked me what my favorite Nolan was, and uh, it's either The Dark Knight or Oppenheimer. Um, oh, yeah, it's he really doesn't do wrong though. Like I love his movies. No, uh, people hate on The Dark Knight Rises, and I think that movie's kick ass. Excellent, so, it's yeah. excellent. I love Tenet, and a lot of people don't like it. I love Tenet, and you don't need to know everything. Like Christopher Nolan said, he said recently in an interview, he was like, "You're not supposed to know everything about Tenet." And I'm like, yes, because you just have to think about it. Like, you really, like, when you finish one of his movies, especially a movie like Tenet, everybody's going to have their own ways of thinking of that movie. Like, what is it about? Mm. How do you interpret it? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I I, I get that with no one's movies. And that's just, that that just seems like it's hey, it's been a it's been a thing yeah what's up jason uh it's been a thing for a while you know where it's like people really want to find the the deeper message or or this in the, in the material and it's like guys sometimes sometimes it's cool to just just watch and just have fun exactly. you know you I'm don't sorry. need to know everything uh no sarah i don't have any uh not that i know of none of my local theaters are bringing kubrick films back no, what about you but i no i would love to see some kubrick in theaters though Especially The Shining, like that's on my bucket list of movies just to see on the big screen. So. Yeah, well, we're not gonna. Yeah, I know, I hear you. I'm one of the few people that went and saw Doctor Sleep when it was in theaters, guys. Y'all, yeah, more of you should have gone. More of you should have gone. Um, I always, well, I was gonna say, I always say they pushed three Stephen King movies out that year. I think they should have like put one out, like, well, if they would have put it out in 2020. I would have been pushed back. So I'm glad it came out in 2019 because yeah. at least it came to theaters. But yeah, I agree with you. I, I saw it in theaters and I wish it would have done better. It's it came a week, it came out a week after Joker. Like, why would you do that? Yeah, it was weird. Which we're going to get to talking about Joker here in a little bit. Uh, we're definitely going to talk about Joker. But um, what was the name? Oh, so Justin, I, I want to give everybody an update. Uh, if you follow me on social media then you probably followed along in my torment last night. Justin, I've been watching more Italian horror movies because Christian wants to cover it soon. And okay. it's, it, you know, Giallo, it's not something I've really ever dived into. Um, and you're, you know, you're, you're a big cinephile. So I'm sure you've seen a lot of these. And uh, yeah, I've seen those, yeah. The one that I was told to watch last night um, was The Beyond. And One of my favorites. I watched it last night. And I just want to say um, <laughs> the extended sequence with the spiders mm -hmm. was one of the worst things I've ever watched. 
in in the sense of like i was legitimately screaming at my tv like it's when they're eating the guy the tarantula oh gosh yes i know what you're talking about now it was it was one of the hardest things i've ever sat through and because i'm arachnophobic and so i I can't yeah when you have big real spiders too we're not talking like eight-legged freaks type spiders spiders. yeah these are real oh god dude it it burrowed under my skin. I wanted to vomit. Oh, no. No, no, no. Now, now, there's another scene in that movie that gets me, and it's the scene where the acid is poured on this woman's face, and like her face slowly starts melting away, and I'm like, mm-hmm. I can't. Yeah. I love the, the movie. Girl, yeah. yeah. The little girl's just like standing there watching. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. I'm like, well, now, I love the Beyond. I have a hot take here, though. Lucio, is it Lucio Volce? Yes, mm-hmm. Lucio Volce directed this one. Um, he's not my favorite Italian director. I I think I love two movies of his. Are you, know, you an just, Argento? You're an Argento guy, aren't you? I'm an Argento fan, and I like Lamberto Bava. I love Michelle Suave, his work. Lucio Volce, for me, I think there's... Let me look at that. Let me think about this. There's two movies I love of his. Zombie. Which I didn't love right away. It took me a long time to really love Zombie. I love it. I love it. And The Beyond. I know a lot of people love City of the Living Dead. I can never get into it. There's something about City of the Living Dead I'm not a big fan of. That one is praised by a lot of horror movie fans. And I I could sit there and watch it and go, it's a good film. But there's something about it. I just don't love that movie. Yeah, well, that's actually the next one I'm watching. So uh, I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah. There's one scene. You're going to cringe yeah. so bad. Christian told me. He said, there's a scene in that movie. It's one of the hardest things I've ever had to watch. There's and two like, scenes in that movie that are the hardest things to watch. One has can't to do wait. With, yeah, one has to do with guts. And the other one has to do with the drill. And that's okay. all I'm going to say. Okay, but no spiders. All right, we're good then. We're good. No we're spiders good. in that movie. No. Uh, yeah, Blu-ray Addict. I did see that they announced a new scary movie. Uh, they said it's going to be a reboot. Uh, you know, I don't know. I just, I feel like, I mean, I guess we'll see, but I, I really don't have any feelings on it. The scary movie five, Justin and I have talked about it before. Oh. It was awful. God awful trash. Um, if they bring come, back Anna Ferris and Regina King, not Regina King. Yeah. 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 If they bring yeah. him back. Yeah. I, I'd be in, but I just, I don't know. I, it's just not. You know, and, and I'm not trying to poo-poo it. Like, if anybody's excited for it, like, that's awesome. And, and I hope it's good, but I just see them leaning more into this PG-13 trendy, quote-unquote, comedy that just isn't funny. And that's what they did in Scary Movie 5, and it just wasn't funny. Um, yeah. So, you know. Terrible well, movie. Yeah, but, you know. So, um, Savoy, real quick, I wanted to say I will be seeing Phantom Menace. Phantom Menace. I haven't. Movie. I haven't decided yet. I haven't decided yet, but I did see that they're doing uh, popcorn tubs, I think, and cups. Oh, yeah. I want one. <laughs> I want to get one of those. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to. I mean, I saw all those movies in their original run, as I'm sure you did, too. But That's I never got any like, collectibles, you know. But uh, I may go see Revenge of the Sith on the big screen because oh, that oh, was yeah, just. Uh, Revenge of the Sith. Oh, Revenge of the Sith is just. I don't even. It's I don't give that. a shit. That movie's great. Top three favorite um, favorite Star Wars movies. It's in my top three, and then I have hot takes for the other two. But you know. well, it's my number four, uh, and I, I love the movie. But I would put uh, my favorite is A New Hope. The best one is Empire. So those are always interchangeable for me. One and two. Number three is The Last Jedi, and then Revenge of the Sith. Oh, those. you ours is tied. Ours is a little different. Ours is so. Empire Strikes Back, my favorite Star Wars movie. Hot Take, The Last Jedi, my second favorite Star Wars movie. I love it. Love it's it, great. still love it today. Mm-hmm. Revenge of the Sith, top three. My number four is A New Hope. Okay. So we have the same movies, they're just in different orders. Yeah, different order. Yeah. Hey, Chris Fold. How you doing, buddy? Thank you for the $2 super chat. Uh, all is... All is all right, you know. Justin and I, uh, things 
Pretty good. Things are okay. We're here. We're alive. We have our health. Uh, that's mm -hmm. really all that matters. Uh, yeah. Happy, happy to see you. By the way, guys, like the stream if you haven't yet. Come on, takes you not even half a second. Just click it. There's a thumb down there. Like click it. That. Click that sucker. Um. All right, Justin. Next bit of th news I want to cover with you okay. is um, Blair Witch. Now I, I I know everybody's talking about it, and and I made a video on my channel last night about it, and and I saw in the comments a lot of opinions about, oh my God, keep Jason Blum away from the Blair Witch Project. Blumhouse is going to ruin this. Blah 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 blah. There's a lot of old heads and old fogies out there that are really just banging the drum on social media about how this is just. It, you know, same shit they always say when it comes to a new property, or an old property coming back. Oh, this this is ridiculous. They're gonna they're gonna discredit all the greatness that came before it. Blah blah blah. First of all, we've said a million times. I'll keep saying it. No, they're not. It, th that movie still exists. The original. It's still there. It's always gonna be it's there. Still it's still there. Movie. Yeah. It's you know. Uh, and two, I liked the 2016 movie, so I, I I'm open minded to thinking that. Oh, yeah they can make a, a decent Blair Witch movie. It doesn't need to be the original. Uh, you can make no. a decent one. But I will say this, where I agree with everybody, Justin, I want your thoughts on this okay. too. I don't want to remake. I don't, I don't want, want to remake. remake. Don't don't remake it. You can't remake Blair Witch Project. Like, yeah. You cannot do that. There's no way you can do it. That is one of those movies. And I'm not saying it just because it'd be like, don't touch that movie. It's one of my favorites. You just can't touch and remake the Blair Witch Project. You know, you can make a movie in that universe, no. but to remake it, no, you can't do that. Like that's that would that was a special film for me, and I'm sure for you and many people. Like, I, I you know, I rented that multiple times on VHS, and when I was a kid, I was naive and thinking because I was young, I kept thinking, "Is this real?" Like, I thought it was real too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just because of the marketing mm -hmm. was so good for it. Like it was such great marketing. Mm -hmm. Um that you just can't And I wasn't pri I wasn't I wasn't privy to the internet yet either. No. So I was I didn't know to go online and you know look. And you really honestly though it's like when that movie came out we had internet but it was very I mean it wasn't like we have today. There wasn't mm -hmm. YouTube back then. There wasn't any of that back then. So um yeah. The marketing was fantastic for it, and I love that movie so much. It's it's top ten favorite horror movies of all time for me. I think top five. Yeah, top five. Hey, I what's up, Jaden? How hey, you Jayden. doing, sexy? Um, so uh, yeah, I, I I see what a lot of people are saying in the chat and what they've said on the video that I made and what I've seen on social media. Like I said, I get the general sentiment. Like I, I don't, I, I'm not. Look, it, I understand you. You hear Blair Witch Project re anything, remake, reboot, and and people immediately cringe. And then you also say Blumhouse, and people immediately cringe. Now, having said that, Christian and I did a, an episode of the podcast where we broke down Blumhouse, every single movie that Blumhouse has put out there, and we gave a thumbs up or a thumbs down to it. And it was uh, at the end of the day. Like there were more that we gave thumbs up to than thumbs down to. Mm -hmm. And looking at, oh, thank you, Jaden. You're so kind. Uh, <laughs> and uh, like, it was like, bro, I feel like the bad movies get blasted a lot by people. So it brings this negative connotation to the Blumhouse name. But in reality, there's more passable stuff than bad stuff. With Blumhouse. I really do think so. I think I so, too. And Christian does, too. This is an old school guy. Justin and Christian, these are two of the the guys I, I look to when it comes to this stuff. Because, one, they're older than me. So they've lived more. It, they've lived through some of these eras more than I have. They've seen more films than me. That's just not even arguable. And for both of these guys to say the same thing, like, yeah, there's more good than bad there. There's it's more. just everybody focuses on the bad. Everybody yeah. focuses on the bad. And I think in general, people want to focus on instead of looking at something and going, this could be good. Not everybody, but you, I'm going to say this. Like there are people out there that are like, how can we find it to be bad? You know what I mean? Like they don't want to like go and be like, this is going to be good. They all automatically want to assume this is going to be bad. This is going to be awful. And that's not the case. And again, Blumhouse 
they have their great movies. They have their awesome movies. They have their fantastic films. And they also have bad movies. But that's like any studio out there. And so... He's just the boogeyman. I, He's just the boogeyman for these people right now because Warner Brothers, they're not doing shit with horror. Paramount, they're not doing much with horror. Sony, not, not you know where to speak of. Like, go down the list of these studios that used to really put out a lot of horror movies that aren't doing that anymore. The only studio that is, is Blumhouse. So... He's the big bad wolf right now where and everyone's Jason, like, oh, and Jason Blum loves horror movies. Embrace somebody that loves the genre. He and loves yes. the genre. He, he embraces the genre. Yes, you're going to have your flops. But the thing about it is, it's just like he loves the genre. If he didn't love the genre, he would he wouldn't be doing what he's doing. And, and I'll say this, Justin, and I, I'm I'm. I'll say this, and I really just think that this is what I, I'm always going to believe this. I'm not mad at Jason Blum for doing this with any of these franchises. At least he's trying. You know who I'm mad at? Warner Brothers, Paramount, you name it. Go down the list of these companies that have lost some incredible IP over the years or mishandled incredible IP over the years. And now they could give a shit less about giving us a new Nightmare movie, a new Friday movie, you name it, a new Child's Play movie. You just go down the list. And mm -hmm. it's that is to me why I, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, it's not that I'm a fan or not a fan of Blumhouse. I'm ambivalent when I hear the name Blumhouse. I understand why the internet is majority like, oh no. But look, the movies make money. They just do. They do. And he's the, He's the only guy right now that is actively trying, at least major studio wise, trying to put the horror, horror out. Yes. Yeah. He's keeping he's, it alive. He's he, keeping he, it alive. It's it's just true. Bro, War, New Line Cinema was the house that Freddy Krueger built, and now they don't do shit for I mean, horror. they just, they announced, like, Warner Brothers just announced that this next Conjuring movie is the last film in that universe. Like, they're not doing anything after that. No. Like, no, well, they said it's the last mainline Conjuring is it the la I feel like it's going to be their last one. They probably just... I have high standards, thank you very much. But we won't talk about that. So, and my name's not Chris. My name's not. Chris. Uh, he's talking. Yeah. Um, I. Yeah, I, I thought they were almost. I thought they were done with it. <laughs> but anyway, but yeah, you're great. I mean, look at Universal Studios. I love Universal Studios, but like, are they doing? I guess they were part of the Halloween. I mean, they were. With Blumhouse, it was a it was a partnership. It was a partner. So, yeah. so Blumhouse Bl Blumhouse financed it, and then Universal right. distributed it. Yeah. Uh, thank you again so, yeah. for the super chat, Savoy. Uh, yeah, yeah, having a dog would be sick. I'd love that poster, just like the video game poster. Got a fucking right. dog. But yeah, Universal. I, I won't give them crap because they're they did bring out those Halloween movies. But yeah, I you know there are major other studios like you said Warner Brothers and and Paramount, but you know just. They're not willing to pump out the, the, you know, the horror movie genre enough. And here you have Jason Bloom who loves the genre. And again, you're going to have your awesome and your bad movies in every studio. But there's some bangers out there from Blumhouse. And I'm one that loved the Last Exorcist movie. I think it was awesome. And I'm kind of sad to see that they're not really going to go anywhere too much with it i think it's kind of dead i don't think no no uh, jason jason blum gave an update a couple weeks ago and he said no we are still making another one he right. said he said they're recalibrating what the story is going to be now because they feel like they have to make some changes after obviously the reception that believer got but he did confirm we are still doing another one they they were it's a three picture deal like that's that was that was what the, the purchase was for so um they are still doing another one um but uh, look, and to that point, cosmic urgency. I mean, yeah, he's he's a business man. Like he he wants to make money. Nobody gets in the business to lose money. Um, having said that, uh, I, I would say that Jason Blum, above all else, also watch the Shark Tank with Jason Blum on it if you guys get a chance. Because there's this idea of of Jason Blum out there that is just like completely fabricated bullshit. And Christian was actually the one that told me Christian was like, dude, watch the shark tank of Jason Blum. He's actually like really smart, really methodical, really calculated. He's a really big horror fan. And he like, is. he, and he, I mean, it, it is true. I watched it and the dude, his knowledge of the horror genre is unparalleled. 
the shit he has, the 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 memorabilia, the collectibles, like the love for the genre is very very real. And I mean, he's a really smart guy that built that company from, from the ground, ground up. up. Like it's, yeah, it, it, you know, time. yeah, from the and ground it, up. Like, so again, that's what I'm saying. I think at the end of the day, it's just he's the boogeyman right now because he is the guy that's trying to acquire everything. They look at him as like Thanos. Oh, you're just trying to add another stone into your gauntlet, and it's like but, fucking nobody else will. And I'm so, sorry. Yeah, and here's the thing too. You, you know, people want to see that as a negative thing. It's not a negative thing. He wants to keep these franchises alive. That's what he wants. He wants to bring these franchises back when no one else is doing it. So praise him instead of giving him so much crap. Like, or just, just I love it, Jason Bloom. I love him. I love the guy. I, I like I like him well enough as a dude. I th I think he's funny. I, he, he's got this weird kind of like dad vibe to him. Like I just I, I like him well enough. But I will say like I don't need people to love him at all because i don't love him he's, he's fine but hating the guy because you've hated a couple of his movies it just comes across as like really i live in my mom's basement at you know 55 years old and eat cheetos and play xbox all day energy like it's just because oh. it's just fabricated bullshit like the reason you don't like jason blum just call a spade a spade you because you don't know anything about him, especially if you haven't watched the, the Shark Tank with him on it. But like the reason you don't like him is probably because he made a movie, a sequel to a movie you loved, or revived a movie that you loved, and you hated, hated that movie. So you're like, he sucks, he's the worst, Blumhouse is the worst. And like I said, it gives off very middle-aged man in his underwear in the basement eating Cheetos energy. It's just pathetic, dude. Like Oh my God, cry me a river. Like New Line Cinema hasn't put out a movie that you hated in one of your favorite horror franchises. I'm sorry, Freddy's Dead. I Freddy hate that movie. Trash. And Freddy's it didn't, trash. yeah, and it didn't make me go, damn you, Bob Shea, damn you, New Line. Hey, you, you it's away. sacrilegious. Like it happens. Get the fuck over it. Like I, it's so lame, dude. Like I, but it, what it is, it is what it is. It's whatever. And the I want to say this is he's the only one doing it. And I want to say this, you know, I, I have no interest in like Night Swim or Imaginary. Like I could care less about the movies. Not, it's just not my cup of tea. They, they just didn't look like it from the trailers. Um, however, I also love the fact that Blumhouse or Jason Bloom and his company are giving directors, writers, you know, producers, whatever, well, really writers and directors, a chance to make a movie because those films are like more, I wouldn't say they're independent movies, but they're not. He's giving those movies a chance and he's saying, let's release these in theaters, so, you know, get them out there for people to see. And if they don't do well, they don't do well, you know, but he's giving them a chance. Does that make sense? Like he's giving well, these writers and directors a chance. It, yes. And your point that you're making is exact is relevant to the, the sarcasm received in the chat right now. Uh, you guys do know that he's just the head of the production company, right? He doesn't write the scripts. He doesn't oh, direct right. the films. He, he releases really, movie. really doesn't have much input in it. Black Christmas came out the way it did because he gave that director complete control over her mm -hmm. film and she made the movie she wanted to make and it got backlash and they never followed up after that because they didn't like, uh, look at Believer. He gave David Gordon Green complete control and it got backlash and now they're recalibrating to because they they have to make another one. They're trying to make their money back, but it's going to go in a different direction because he listens when people are like, that didn't work. Uh, so we're going to fix it. Yes, because he's a businessman. He's trying to make money. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I feel like, Everybody, like, you blaming Jason Blum for those movies is lame. I'm just yeah, going to say, blame, blame the writers and the directors and the actors and the people that were involved in giving you that shit, that no. actually made that shit on screen. Not don't the person that gave them the money that was like, if anything, that's cool that the guy that's ahead of the studio is like, here's $20 million, go do what you're going to do. I, I, you know, I want to give you control to make the movie you want to make. Now, if it sucks, it sucks. So we won't make saying, another one. Yes, go make your movie. And and that's very important. A lot of people that work with, a, a lot of people that work with Jason Blum have talked about how he is very, like, 
he's very much that way, very empowering to the writers and the directors of being like, yeah. oh, you have this idea that's really cool. I, I want to help you see that idea through. Here's the money. You go do your thing. Like, I mean, again, again, not his not his fault. If the movie comes out bad, that's the director. That's the writer. And you know what? He's he's a hell of a lot better than those two pieces of crap that we had. You know who I'm talking about back in uh, the Yes, years. Harvey and Bob. Yeah, the Weinsteins. I mean, you've heard horrendous stories about how they were so controlling and cruel and mean and plenty more um, to their to their actors and crew directors and writers and everything. And obviously, you know, much darker and pieces of crap people now that we've heard a lot more about them. But, you know, from a from a, a studio point of view, they were terrible to their directors and writers and wanted to control what the writers and directors were doing where Jason Bloom is like, you make your movie. I'm going to let you do it. And if it doesn't come out right, it doesn't come out right, but he's giving them the control. Yeah. So, sorry. All right, Justin. No, no, you're good. Justin, I, I wanted to pull this up because I just want to go over this right. with you. I, I want your thoughts. Cause I've, I've talked with Christian about this and um, you know, I've got, I've gotten his opinion and I, and I want to get your opinion. Okay. So, Let's see. De -de 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 -de. Okay, Justin. Uh, Blumhouse. Paranormal activity. Good or bad? Good. Do I, I like paranormal activity? Just, just, I love yeah, paranormal activity. I love paranormal activity. Paranormal, paranormal activity too. I love paranormal activity too. Insidious. I love insidious. Sinister. I love sinister. The purge. Used to love it. I enjoy it now. But solid enough. Solid enough. Oculus. Love Oculus. One of my favorites from the last decade. Lords of Salem. Underrated, underappreciated. I fucking love it. Mm -hmm. Part of my language. Uh, but here we go. And, and now I'll just, I'll just go. I'll go yeah, through the list going. really, keep really going. quick. And just so the visit, the green inferno, um, hush. Uh, hush is we. Yes, Ouija Origin of Evil, Split, Get Out, The Belko Experiment, Happy Death Day. Uh da 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 da. da. Hold on. So I'm trying to uh, Unfriended, Unfriended Dark Web. Uh obviously the Halloween trilogy, Happy Death Day to You, Us. Um Oh no. That's, get Out, you said movie. Get Out, right? Yes, The Invisible Man. Oh, love The Invisible Man. Uh freaky upgrade. Underrated. Love upgrade. upgrade. Um, bu, 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 bu. black phone, the black phone. Love the love the black phone. That's awesome. not a big. I'm not a big fan of Megan, but a lot of people love Megan. Um, I really enjoy it now. So, yeah. well, but but here's here's my here's my point to that. I just listed off over a dozen movies that have received critical acclaim, or uh, and or audience acclaim. Most people really like those movies. That's Blumhouse. I mean, mm -hmm. like I said, for every bad one, you can find a good one. And I, That's but true. I think the moral of the story there is it's every studio is that way. So, I, but again, every but it's studio. easy. It's easy when the mark, when you've cornered the market and nobody else is doing it because now all horror is Blumhouse essentially. So it's That's like, if something's true. bad, we're blaming you. And if something's good, we're going to make excuses as to why it was good. You had nothing to do with it being good. Uh, and, you know, and I get that. I get that. It's it's very similar to a lot of things in life, you know, laying blame and giving praise equally and yeah. fairly. So it, it's it goes both ways. But so as far as the Blair Witch thing goes, look, yes, the Blair Witch Project is never going to be replicated, uh, obviously, for right. yeah the phenomenon that it was. And uh, yeah. it it really jump started found footage horror and uh, a lot, had a lot of people believing it was real myself and justin included so no you're, you're never going to replicate that um having said that could a could a good filmmaker come in and make a an acceptable say sequel or or uh just a movie in the same universe like maybe it's yeah. just a different you know different group of people going into the same yeah. woods yes there's nothing to say that that can't happen so exactly. Yeah, I just kind of look at it that way. Whereas, like, I'm gonna wait to find out who's behind it and what the what the approach is here before I start to go. Like, I don't know. Like, Lord, it's for me. It's just like 
just announcing that it's Blumhouse, that's not even the beginning of it for me. That just tells me, okay, something is happening. They're going to put money behind this. They're going to make a movie. I'm waiting to hear what's the story. Like, what yeah. are we doing here? Who's writing it? Who's directing it? And that's where I'll decide whether or not I'm, you know, whether or not I'm I'm all in on the idea or whether I'm dreading it. But I'm going to wait till then before I just, I don't know, because... I was really excited with Halloween 2018, Justin. Mm -hmm. And uh, that movie let it me was, down. It let me down the first time, but it's 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 gone better. It's but at the first time, yeah, I was like, yeah, not that I I am one now that goes into a movie. I'm not hyping myself up. I'm just gonna go into the film, and I'm either gonna love it or not love it. I I kind of want to go back to the experience that I had with the Nightmare on Elm Street reboot where I went into that movie. I went into that movie with low thoughts and I thought, it's not going to be good. Because I was discussing this with a, a group of people last week. We were talking about a Nightmare on Elm Street. It got brought up. I think I brought it up because when YouTube back then, when YouTube was much smaller... I just remember that trailer came out and people were just trashing it. And, Nightmare and I was one that I, I went into to it thinking it, it might not be great. And I was I had low thoughts. And I walked out of that theater completely wrong. I loved it. Yeah, I, I had a... Obviously, that's been a very public thing about me on my channel is that I... I am an apologist for Nightmare 2010 in the sense that I think it's fine. Uh, I, I don't love the movie. I, love um, I, I think it's fine. You know, it's it's way better than people make it sound like. And no, I was listing the ones that I've seen. I didn't want to speak on ones that I hadn't seen. There's a lot of like Fantasy Island. I heard it sucked. I've never oh, seen horrible. it. Horrible. Horrible yeah, movie. Again, yeah, that's like, a bad, that's a bad Blumhouse movie. Yeah. Uh, like uh, the Gallows Act 2. Never seen it because I didn't like the first one. I, I was listing ones that I, I liked, but I get it. You hate Jason Blum and you hate Blumhouse. That's fine, but it's not going to stop him from making movies. <laughs> so, I'm not going to apologize for Love and Truth or Dare. I fucking love I, do, truth or dare. I don't like I that love one. It. It's I okay. Like one. I understand. I mean, it's silly as I'll be, and I'm cussing. And I saw favorite. it in theaters. I saw it in theaters, Justin. I, I was so bummed. Too. I'm sorry I'm cussing on your stream. I don't want you to get oh, demonetized. Oh, Justin, don't fucking cuss. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Truth or Dare, that's one of those little, like, Bloomhouse movies everybody hates, but I love it. So. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, my, th that's just my point is, like... Yeah, I mean... For, e for literally every studio, uh, every studio that's ever done horror, uh, or at least a, a decent amount of horror... There's there's good and there's bad. It's it's literally always that way. If you choose to yeah. focus on the bad, then you know I I you must be a lot of fun at parties. Uh, I choose to I hold up the good. That. I hold up the good and I forget about the bad. I've never like for example, T Parker mentioned this in the chat. I've never been somebody that's been really big on the A twenty four bandwagon. I feel I'm not like a big, I was gonna say I'm. It, 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 there's a lot of I feel like there's a lot of pretension there. I think there's a lot of pretension there with like oh we are so above. The horror that's genre. What I think. That's why yeah, I don't like it too much. And <laughs> and half the movies, I, I, for every movie I've liked of A24, I have disliked another. So it's like it's. I feel like they they bat they're batting five hundred for me. They like, I, I like one. I don't like one. I like one. I don't like one. And, and I, some of them I love. Hereditary. I fucking love Hereditary. I love Midsummer. I'm a I Midsummer fan. I mean, and I'm not hating on A24 because there are movies I love, and some of my favorite films come from that studio. I just think that they, and I don't, you know, this is going to be mean to say, but you, I mean, but this is, you just talked about it. I'm going to talk about it. I think they think they're high bar as far as genres of movies go. And they look at everything else and go, eh, you know, you guys aren't as good as us. Uh, actually, actually, Perp, they, uh, Blumhouse actually does make a lot of original movies. They just, most of the time their original movies don't really get the acclaim or the attention or they're just not good. But uh, Paranormal Activity. That's an original. Insi uh, City, uh, Insidious, original. Sinister, original. original. The Purge, original. I mean, mm -hmm. they've, they've actually made a lot of original movies. Uh, they just, A24 is just what's what's edgy now. You know, it, it's, it's all oh, the kids love A24. Gen Z loves A24. And, 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 and by the way, 
miss me with the the, the belief that and Jaden, you're right. It is a lot of the fans of A24 movies that make it that way. That That's what it is. Not like, the studio. I should yeah. take that back. Not the studio. It's the it's studio like it's like talk to me. Uh, just Gen Z was rant that. was well, they were mm-hmm. raving about that movie on social media. Oh, it's so scary. It's so scary. I watched it and I was like, it was fine. I've I've seen movies like that when it people are scary, like, but yeah, yes, but it's like, oh my god, possessed object? No way! I've never seen that before. People were acting like it was so original. I'm like, this is not, not an original really. idea at all. But go that's, off. That's uh, and like, it, by the way, I don't know what Gen Z is. Is that like a? Generation it's it's the thing? younger generation. Yeah, it's it's the that's, people in their teens the and stuff. early twenties. Yeah, it's it's all very. That stuff. I'm agent. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't understand the language. The, yeah, it, no, it's, and it makes us look old. Whatever, I don't really care. I mean, I we can look, we people can view us that way all we want, but like, having said that, that's not to say the studio as a whole is like that because Hereditary, I I adored that movie. You adored Midsummer, and a lot of people like that movie too. So it's like it's not like we're saying there aren't truly great films in the oh, in their war. movies. Yeah, yeah, but like we're acting like. A, if if A twenty four's name is behind it, oh, it's going to be good. There well, are I, behind it, it's going to suck. And I'm like, there no. are yes, there are a hundred, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of people in this country right now and in the world, definitely thousands, that they hear A twenty four and they're like, it's going to be good. So they go into it like, no matter what, I'm going to say it was good because it's A twenty four. And it's like, nah, dude, it's cool to walk out of a movie every now and then and go, that wasn't good. Did did not like that. Um, you know, that's, I, yeah. I noticed the thing too, with a 24 is, and again, I'm not dogging on the studio cause I'm glad they're pumping out movies. I'm always happy with when they, you know, I, and I want to see them get bigger. I absolutely want to see a yeah. 24 get bigger. I think they have some great movies and I, I would love to see that, but some of the fans mindset about a 24 is a little overblown. It's a little overblown, but I noticed though, there are some movies that when they first come out, people praise them, people love them. And then over time, they're like, it's not as good as I remember it being. And it's like, it, because they're taking, they, they've got off that high and they're realizing, mm-hmm. well, that movie isn't as good as I remember it being. Does that make sense? Like, yes, just, yes. And, yeah. and Perp, you're, you're absolutely right. I think the X trilogy, as long as Maxine is a great movie, and I, like we said at the beginning, I have no reason to doubt that it, you know, I'm sure it'll be great. It will probably go down as one of my favorite trilogies ever like dead serious. If you can, I mean, Pearl and X are incredible films, incredible films. And if Maxine is the same way, I mean, show me a trilogy. That's there aren't a lot of trilogies that are great from front to back. I loved, uh, yeah, I was looking at Jaden's comment. I loved iron claw. That was fantastic. You loved bodies, bodies, bodies. I didn't love bodies. I didn't love Jaden. I've never even seen it. Uh, I love The Witch, Moonlight, Midsommar, Ugh. Priscilla. I love Priscilla. That was A24, right? Yeah. Dude, so, bo- Bodies, Bodies, Bodies was about as mid as mid gets. It. I didn't see it. I, I really don't have much of an interest in seeing it. Dude, I don't and, know what and, to do. I'm not going to spoil it for you, Justin, but the, the twist is uh, anger in, like anger inducing. It will piss you off. It's so Ooh. stupid. So mm-hmm. stupid. Like when it was revealed, I was like, "That's fucking." Dumb. Thank you, Sarah. We love you. Love oh, you, friend. Thank you, Sarah, for the five dollars super Your chat. Favorite I, people. Thank you for being in here. Uh, and I'm glad Sarah and I have been talking a little bit more uh, on Instagram about when she goes to see a movie or when I go see a movie, and we give thoughts back and forth. So I'm always happy to see you in here, Sarah. And thank you for the super chat. I love you, Sarah. Um, Long time friend of mine. Oh, Katrina, I love House of a Thousand Corpses. I really like uh, the Devil's Rejects. And I didn't really care much for Three from Hell. I love them all. I love all three of them. But House of a Thousand Corpses, by the way, happy 21st anniversary to House of a Thousand Corpses. Um, I got released today, 21 years ago. Uh, I love House of a Thousand Corpses. I love Lords of Salem. Again, we I talked about it before. Rob Zombie, Lords of Salem. Amazing. I love it. Is Rob Zombie the new... J- is, is Jason Blum the new Rob Zombie? Where you hear their name attached to something and oh, the yeah, internet goes, so. oh god! I think ever since the Halloween movies came out, I think it's just. But like, that's Halloween that's end. what Rob's career became. You announce that's Rob Zombie is a yeah. It's like oh announce god, it's Rob movie? Zombie. It's gonna suck. We're and gonna then, automatically hate it. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it's like it, we, every. It feels like every few years we create a new one. Oh, you're right, Jaden. David Gordon Green. David Gordon Green might be there now too. Where they hear That's David Gordon right. Green. I think so. I think David's that. And I, I again, I've, I've had, I've had my ups and downs with David Gordon Green. But I will say this: I yes. loved Exorcist the Believer the first time I saw it. I loved it the second time I rewatched it. But the first time I saw it. I kept I kept thinking to myself after the movie, I'm like, this is the first David Gordon Green horror movie that I walked out loving because it took me a while. It, it took me a while to warm up to his Halloween movies. But The Exorcist was the first one where I was like, this is the first David Gordon Green movie that I love walking out of the theater. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I agree, Jaden. But again, that's not a, yeah, not a high bar. Not a high bar at all, uh, but I think, I think I'm going to be controversial. And be like, no, well, just a, high bar. What, well, no. What he's saying is that if you're the third best Exorcist movie, that's oh, not yeah. a very high bar yeah. because yeah, the yeah. Heretic and the prequels just oh, yeah, I'm not great. Yeah. I haven't seen those prequels in like 15 years. Are they as bad as I remember, Justin? I just remember the last time I watched the beginning, it was just a CGI mess. And that was okay. my issue with it. I was like, this could be good. It's just way too much CGI. And I was like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I watched them I, both back to back years and years ago. And I didn't care for either one. I I have an appreciation for Exorcist 2. It is not a great movie at all. But I have appreciation for that movie. But Believer, Exorcist 3, and The Exorcist, I love all three of those movies. In their own ways. I'm not going to touch the heretic. It's okay. Don't touch it. I know you don't. Justin like Justin likes the tap dancing. I like the tap dancing. I'm oh, no. You know what's it, what, what's funny about what happened to Ella Burstyn? Um, uh, in, in Exorcist Believer, my mom, funny enough, uh, when I showed it to her, by the way, she liked Exorcist Believer, which I was shocked by. Because, um, like, she, she saw the original in theaters back mm -hmm. in the 70s. So... Uh, when it when Ellen Burstyn was in the room with the possessed girl, she's like, oh. "They're not gonna, they're not gonna kill her, are they?" I was like, "No, they're not gonna kill her." And she's like, Just "What's watch. gonna happen?" And when it happened, she was like, "Oh my god!" And I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> I hey, hey, hate, hate David Gordon Green all we want, hate him, love him, whatever your opinion on David Gordon Green is, at least say this: he does not give a shit about keeping your legacy characters alive or or." you know, free from pain. There. He does. He the will make cut. them suffer. Yes. He does the he deep cut. Yeah. He'll, he'll make them suffer. And, uh, you know, hey, Jaden, uh, Jason, what's, what's up, up Jaden? What's up, JDF? How you doing, buddy? Um, yeah. The last time I watched the heretic, Jaden, I fell asleep. I fell asleep when James Earl Jones was like narrating something. Was he like and the I, at the time? Like, yeah. There was like all these locusts and shit. I fell asleep. No, the locusts, like, not the bees. What the hell? Okay. I was just like, what are we doing here? What are we doing? What yeah, doing I know what are we Scorsese, doing Scorsese likes The Exorcist too. And to that, I'll just say we're all allowed to have bad opinions. Hey, I that. like it too, but it's not a great movie at all. Like, it's not even... I haven't watched it in four years. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've... It's one yeah. of those movies I really got to be in the mood to watch. But I like it. I really, you know, I'm just like, you know. Mm. Uh, how do you guys feel about Ready or Not Two not being directed by Radio Silence? Ready um, not. is there is there Ready or Not Two coming out? Yeah, they announced it like two weeks ago. But uh, I will say, why does it need to be made? I'm not being mean. I'm just saying it's not. It's it's one of those movies that don't touch it. We don't need a sequel. Yeah, I mean it. it I'm I'm open to it because I, I loved the first one. I do too. I, I but I think. I honestly think what made Ready or Not work, and that's not to take away from Matt and Tyler at all, um, and and Chad and the whole team at uh, Radio Silence, but I think that personally, Samara Weaving is more important to the success of that movie. Um, mm. Whereas, like, I think they'll be able to withstand the loss of Radio Silence uh, so long as obviously you get Samara Weaving back because she carried the first movie. I mean, her her performance was just she was awesome. She was absolutely oh, she was awesome. awesome. I love Ready or Not, and a big reason why is because of her performance. Yeah, so as long as you have her, I still think they can make it work. Will it be as good as the first one? Probably not. 
Um, but you know, we'll see. Also, I do feel like Radio Silence, they still have some work to do before we really give them too much credit uh, overall, just because they've made a couple good movies. They haven't made many movies. So, like, I want to wait to really, you know, oversell them. I am stoked for Abigail. I'm so excited to see Abigail. Looking forward to a good vampire movie. I I heard it's getting good reviews, but I just, the trailers just don't. You don't want to, what? Oh, we've never talked about it, I guess. Like, I am psyched for it. Like, I wa- I saw the, the name of it, and I was like, what is Abigail? And then I watched the trailer, and I'm like, this is awesome. This looks awesome. I think some of it is the selling point of the cast, because I love a lot of the people in the cast. But I also just need a, I need a great vampire movie, man. It's been a oh, while. Like, and the, the early reviews are that it's really fun. It's funny. It's it's fast-paced. It's It's wild. And, you know, that's kind of what you expect, I think, with Radio Silence. So, like, I have no reason to believe that it probably won't be good. I'm sure it will be good. But I'm just saying, just like Megan, watching the trailers, I was like, it just doesn't do it for me. Like, I don't know. I, I, I'm i not even like, oh, it looks bad. No, it's just simply like, just, I don't, yeah. I don't I know if I really have much interest. I understand. I, you know what? We all have our what, lo- interests, not interests, though. So. That's what makes us awesome. We need to, we all can't have the same opinion. We all have to like discuss like we do and talk about um, what we love, what we don't love, what we're interested in, what we're not interested in. Yeah. Well, Justin, to that point, uh, we, I saw it in the chat. So I want to make sure I get to it because I do not want to miss uh, it. We can't miss this. Joker two. Justin, Joker 2, Joker, oh. Fo- Foley, and mm. you. Um, wow. Let me just say about joker 2's trailer it looked awesome mm. um yes it did it, it looked it, it looks incredible i had no doubt though it's todd phillips it's joaquin phoenix it's it's lady gaga i just i i had high hopes um but i will say that um you know uh, it, it's i don't even know why i said but uh, or no yeah but even with all that I still don't know if I expected the trailer to blow me away that much. It just looks so good. It dude. looks so good. I know. I, I mean, like you said, all the, the names that you named, you know, Todd Phillips, um, Joaquin Phoenix, and uh, Lady Gaga had me sold. Um, but yeah, I didn't, I was like, and I knew I was going to love it because I loved the first one, but I didn't know how much I'd love it. Until I saw the trailer. And wow, I just, I love it. And I love and, and, musicals, but I don't feel like it's going to be a straight up musical. Like, I think there's going to be musical numbers. Yes, there's going to be it's, musical it's, numbers. Uh, well, who is it? Uh, Todd Phillips and one and the editor of the movie have both said it is not what people are making it out to be. Like, music yeah, plays a role in the film. Yes, but it's not, it is not, when you hear the word musical, it is not a prototypical musical like that. No, so, no, no, no. I, look, yeah, I'm, I am really, really uh, looking forward to Joker too. But I will say, I, although I had high hopes anyway, I knew this movie was going to probably be great when it got announced because Todd Phillips had said for years he would not do a sequel to Joker under any circumstances unless he came up with a great idea. Yeah. Yep. He said that after Joker came out and it made a billion dollars. And he said, no, we're not talking about a sequel right now. I didn't have sequel plans because I'm not going to make a sequel unless I can come up with an idea that I think is great. And then when they announced it a couple of years later, I said he came up with a great idea then because he said he wasn't going to do it without a great idea. So, Even the title itself, I love. So Yeah. And then, and dude, Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn. That's incredible casting. Mm-hmm. She's going to kill that. And she's a fantastic actress. Like, yeah, we have, she hasn't been in a whole lot, but she's fantastic. I loved her in Hotel. She gave gave one of the best performances in 2018 with A Star Wars. Born. And even though I didn't love House of Gucci, I loved her performance in the movie. So, what is it about that movie that, uh, like, a lot of people, nobody really loves that movie? What is what is it a lot? I find it to be incredibly slow and boring sometimes. Like it's a long movie and I don't mind long movies. Like I've, I mean, interstellar eight times the theaters people. It's a long ass movie. I love the movie though. It intrigues me from beginning to end where house of Gucci, 
I think it started off where I was like, I love the film. And then like probably the second half of the movie started falling down for me. But without a doubt, Lady Gaga, amazing in it. Stephanie, amazing in it. So. Yeah. yeah and, and look, uh, you know, Blu-ray. And that's another thing, Akeem. Joaquin doesn't do sequels. So. Yeah. For him to do a sequel, uh, it's got to tell you the idea is good. But is good. will will Joaquin Phoenix win the Oscar again? Um, he's going to be a finalist for sure. And it, yeah. it, assuming he delivers like he did in the first one, I'd love to see him. Um, I'd love to see him win it. But I, I'll tell you this: uh, it, Joaquin gives himself to this role. I mean, to to get back into playing Arthur Fleck, he lost a bunch of weight again, and like physically, he it. I mean, physically and mentally, it's it wrecks. It takes a toll on his body, and he's he's given it his all. But I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he got paid like 20 million for this movie. And 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 I'll say this about Lady Gaga too: when she does a project, that's her sole focus, like nothing else. Like she will focus on that one thing, and when that is done, she'll go on to do something else. So she dedicated herself to her past stuff. She dedicated herself to this movie. This was the only thing she was focusing on everything else came later so do you, do you want to know been... what my my favorite part of the trailer was justin what's your favorite part yeah yeah my absolute favorite part is yeah. when she did what he did and her smile when she's doing which she's like i was just like oh my god and i also want to point out their chemistry just from the trailer amazing like they have great chemistry you could tell that they just have great chemistry from that trailer and i'm i'm so psyched i cannot wait i hope yeah, she gets nominated she deserved to get i didn't like house of gucci very much but she deserved to be nominated for that i think i hope she gets nominated for did that. she win for a star is born no she got robbed who won that year uh olivia coleman won for the favorite i believe but I was all 100% rude and free. Yeah, see, I wasn't a huge fan of A Star is Born simply just because it wasn't, like, it wasn't for me, but it was yeah. a great movie, and she was great in it. Like, she, she was great. I mean, yeah. How I, often, we see we see musicians transfer over into acting a lot, and with most of the time, eh, results. How often do you get them coming in and giving, like, Oscar-worthy I know! That's the thing about it. Like, I, and that's what got Hold me on. so. Keep talking, Justin. I'm getting a work phone call. Oh, you're fine. So I, I am, uh, I loved her performance in A Star is Born. And I love the fact that she is a, she is somebody that she, if she's, if she's on a project, she's focusing on that one thing. And she gave so much to a star is born both music and acting wise and sometimes that's hard for people they you know sometimes people can only do music and sometimes people can only do acting and she was able to do both of that both of those things in that one movie and i just i love her in that film another you know cameo that she has very small part is machete kills and i think she rocks in machete kills she's one of the best things about that movie so Who? machete kills lady gaga I, you know you oh, forget okay. that she's in this i was saying she's has a small part but she's still awesome in that movie so i mean i just i love her i adore lady gaga so yeah sorry yeah the you're fine. There was there was a uh, malfunction with something at work uh, uh, with the ceiling. I guess it's been raining all day, and we had like a slow leak, and, oh. and I guess I guess it finally gave out, and a bunch of water came through, and I was like, "Thanks for letting me know. Um, appreciate how, it." How is she overrated when she hasn't done a lot, though? And I'm not saying a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. She's picking some great stuff. She's focusing on this is what I'm gonna do. And that's what I'm going to focus on. She is not overrated. Sorry. I, I, I'll i just say I haven't seen everything she's done, but I have not thought she was anything other than great. She carried a whole season. Seen. Sorry. She carried American a Horror whole Story, season yeah. of American Horror Story. Mm -hmm. That was one of her first big acting gigs. She carried that whole season. That is a tough it, thing, especially it when you're. It was her first. It, that was, it her, was first. her first. Yeah, it was her first. 
and she won a fucking Golden Globe for it. So she's not overrated. Sorry, I had to rant a little bit. No, yeah, she I again. People- I I think that I think she's great. I, I think she's great, and I think that this role is perfect for her. And I think that being next to an actor like Joaquin, uh, who already won an Oscar for playing this role. I think that's only going to bring out the best in her. And I think it's going to really just, I, I just think the dynamic between the two is going to be something to watch. It's and it would be, be it's just going to, I can't wait for the movie. I can't wait. It's going to make a billion dollars and it should. Um, it's going to be huge. And uh, yeah, I, I, and I know for a fact that Warner brothers is not going to want to walk away from Joker after this one does a billion dollars as well. But I oh. got to say, I think you'd be hard pressed to, have Todd Phillips do a third one because he already wasn't going to do this one. No, so, he, he, again, like he had to come up with the story he wanted to do before he made it. So, yeah, but right now, you know, over there with the uh, DC properties, they're really the hey, the, anybody that makes a good one that makes a lot of money, please come back. Please come back. We need more. Like, because DC had been hurting for a while, you know, they, they just hadn't been. But I, I'll say Marvel's getting there too. These Marvel movies aren't doing what they used to do. Well, I will say I loved Aquaman too. I thought Aquaman two was was very entertaining. Thought it was great. Never, I never saw it. Uh, I did hear. Yeah, I I think a lot of people that were fans of the first one in that universe ended up thinking it was it was a good time. Like, but you know, Marvel like, fall, yeah, they're but, falling on hard times. Marvel and DC yeah. both right now, yeah. where it's like superhero movies in general. It's just not. And people are like, oh, it's superhero fatigue. I don't know if I necessarily believe that. I think it's more it's, or less just they're just they've been mostly passable to bad movies recently and people just don't care. You're not going to go spend either. $30 to go see a movie in the theater and have it be man. Like why would you keep doing that? Now Deadpool 3, that movie's going to be huge. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. I am I am one to say this. One, I love Deadpool, but also I love that X-Men franchise, and I love Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. So, I'm also one that likes to say that, like, I I am one that would say that, like, unpopular opinion, I am more of a fan of that X-Men universe than what we got with the MCU, especially as as the MCU was going. Like, I love the MCU, but if I'm going to watch a Marvel movie, a lot of the time, I'm going to go and watch the X-Men movies. Yeah, uh, Justin, have you seen Godzilla and Kong yet? Not yet. I do want to see it. Yes, I do want to see it. I've seen it twice. It is a blast. And uh, they actually just announced today uh, they renewed Monarch Legacy of Monsters for a season two. I liked season one, although if I could give them any constructive criticism for season two, more monsters, please. There were not enough monsters in season yeah. one. They also announced more spinoffs shows that are going to be coming. For the MonsterVerse today, which they haven't given details yet, but they announced multiple that are going to be happening. And that should just tell you guys, the MonsterVerse is, it's building, it's building into something that's a really big deal. I mean, Godzilla and Kong is doing really, really well uh, at the box office. I'm so happy for that. I'm excited. I'm really, really happy that, because after King of the Monsters, I was worried because it did not do well enough. Uh, at the box mm-hmm. office it was kind of a disappointment and i was like oh no like is this going to be the end it just started and they were like no we got we're, we're already filming godzilla versus kong so we got to get this one out and then that one fucking saved movie theaters during covid let's just call a spade a spade yeah it did. It did. and then godzilla and kong is tracking to be the highest grossing of all of them when it's done it's going to make the most money of all the MonsterVerse movies. So it's very alive and well. So I'm really happy that Legendary didn't abandon it uh, because I'm happy too. Good I've liked them. all these movies, all of them. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see it. So I might do a double feature of the Omen, the first Omen and Godzilla on Sunday. You'd be at the theater for like four and a half hours, five hours. Hey, I did that with Haunted Mansion and the Barbie movie. I think I did. I see a third movie of that. No, I just saw the Barbie movie and Haunted Mansion on one day. So, well, I did Barbenheimer and I was at the theater for like six hours. So, Brave Man, Brave. Bra- no, I can't say anything. I did the whole Dark Knight trilogy during the midnight screening of The Dark Knight Rises, and that was like nine hours. <laughs> Isn't aren't they doing the uh 24 hour Star Wars marathon at some point this year? In yes, I could not do that though. Mine would be like, <sighs> I mean, I love the movies, but I don't know if I could do 24 hours just sitting there. No, I love yeah, movies. I- but I- 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, movies that I own that I could watch at home at my own leisure and not have to sit 24 hours straight and watch them back to back to back. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. No, thanks. I'm sorry. I don't care what movies they are. They could say tomorrow we're doing a 24 hour Halloween uh, marathon. Halloween I'd be like, yeah. I'd be like yeah, I'm I good. I can't yeah. do all of them. Not all of them. Theater. Now, if they were like, we're, we're going to have a sick popcorn tub and, and cup, I'd go buy it and go home. I wouldn't watch the movies. <laughs> I would too. I would too. Yeah. I'd really, I would take the popcorn bucket. Yeah. So. Yeah. Give me, give me the Michael Myers head popcorn tub. Yeah. You know, okay. I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. We but I'm not that. watching all the movies. What's up, Michigan Dipper? How you doing? Hello. Um, hello. So, yeah. I mean, it's, you know, it is what yeah. it is. I mean, no. I, I am just, there's been a lot of news recently. Also, Justin, I do have to touch. Did you ever see Transformers Rise of the Beasts? Not yet, but I have the 4K. I need to watch Justin, it. Justin, it's a blast. I'm excited to see it. I need to I want to watch all of them again because it's been a long time since I I've just seen. got I just got done rewatching all of them. Uh, Did you? Because like, I love that ago. franchise. I don't like Last Night too much, but the rest I actually really love or enjoy. You know, narratively speaking. And technically speaking, the last night is probably the weakest, but I still have a blast with that movie. I just do. I, I love the action. I just love yes, it. and 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 evil Optimus Prime. What my, one of my favorite moments in the entire Transformers series is after he he said, well, right after Optimus turns back from Nemesis Prime in the third yeah. act of Last Night, and he says, "Did you forget who I am?" And he cuts, he spins and cuts all those robots' heads off with his sword yeah. in one swing, and then he says, "I'm Optimus Prime." I was in the theater, and I was like, "You're like, fuck yeah, you are, you're Optimus Prime. Let's go." Um, yeah, yeah, no, I, I think that um, the Rise of the Beasts. Even if if you're someone that didn't like Michael Bay's Transformers movies, most people liked Rise of the Beast. And if Michael you Bay. and if you did like Michael Bay's movies, they like Rise of the Beast too because it takes what Bay did well, but also really just does focus more on like the the the, the story and and some yeah. of the hum, human aspects and and I just think that it's it's just it's a blast. But the reason I'm yeah. mentioning it is because do you know the twist at the end? The, no, the crossover. Right. No, I don't. Okay, then I can't tell you. Okay, well then stay. You might as well just tell me. I'm fine with it. Tell me. Well, they announced today that they're officially moving forward on the sequel with uh, Rise of the Beasts, and it is a, a crossover with G.I. Joe. Sweet. I know Transformers. Yeah. What was it called? I saw the title today. Transformers oh. 1. That's an animated movie. Yeah. Oh, it's an animated movie. Okay. Yeah. But no, they announced that uh, they're they're moving forward with that movie. Um, yeah, the end of Ri the end of Rise of the Beast is like the the human the, our new human protagonist is like talking to uh, it's like a job interview or he thinks it's a job interview, um, and at the end the guy says uh, you know take my card we'd love to have you or whatever and he flips the card and it says GI Joe and then the sweet. movie ends and everyone was like what the fuck they're gonna do a crossover yes they're doing a crossover I've hey, never seen any of the GI Joe movies so. I, I own them on 4K and I've not watched them yet. So I meant I've to seen watch. G them. I've seen GI Jane. I have seen GI Jane. I have yeah. seen GI Jane multiple times. Is that Demi Moore? Yeah, Demi Moore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, she have you seen Heroes? Sorry, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't. I love Heroes. I love. I yeah. The first season's like one of the best seasons. Is that Demi Moore as well? Yeah. No, she's not in that, but Blue Attic, Blu-ray Attic was talking about heroes. And I was like, Oh yeah, I saw yeah, I saw they're doing a uh they're doing a reboot of that or like a sequel series. I, I don't I don't know. Um I mean that's that's cool, but that's that's kind of the, the space we're in right now, Justin. Everything's coming back. Except no. Freddie and Jason. Melrose Place is coming back, bitches. Did you all hear that? Are you all Melrose Place fans? I'm watching it right now. I love that. They're coming uh, back yeah. to Melrose Place. No, I did. I did not know that. Uh, yes, Cosmic. They're they're not gonna follow off of those movies. It's it's a reboot for GI Joe. Um, which those movies did not do well financially. Or yeah, they're kind of revamping that one. Yeah. So what basically what they're trying to do is, hey, people like Transformers, but nobody gives a shit about GI Joe anymore. But we have this property and we want to make it successful. So they're basically gonna put GI Joe in with Transformers to try to make people care about GI Joe again. We'll yeah. see if it works, but. See, I don't. I'll take Transformers any day, though. So. Oh yeah, yeah. You you give me Transformers movies till I die. I mean, that's 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 what I'm about. I wonder who uh, they're gonna bring back for Melrose Place. I'm sorry. Yes, I wonder who they're gonna bring back. 
Never I'm a Melrose it. Place fan. I love Melrose Place. So never seen it, but I'm happy for you. Thank I'm you. happy for you and everybody that is a fan because look, I, all I know is I'm probably going to cry tears of joy when we get an announcement for a new Nightmare movie. I really. Oh, I will too. I'm psyched. Yeah. Oh, Saw Eleven. Yeah, delay. I want to talk about that real quick. I'm, I'm fucking not, pissed I'm off. Not a, I'm, you know, I'm not happy with it, but I'm not, but I'm okay as well because hopefully they're doing it because they want to take their time with it. Like, I don't want them to pump it out and be a bad movie. Does that make well, sense? The, the belief, the belief was, and I, and I can tell you from behind the scenes of just what I had heard and what had been, it's not like inside info. It had been circulating online that um, apparently the producers were getting really too heavily involved and we're not really giving uh kevin grudert the you know kind of the, the agency to kind of do his own thing yeah. and uh that's never a good thing ever to no to, it's never a good thing to mess Even with well, let them do what they're th let them do their thing yeah to mess with the creatives um I don't know to, to mess with their process and, and kind of, I just, it it's never good. I don't like when studios do that. If someone's going to make a shitty movie, let them make a shitty movie. Uh, at least they can make their movie they wanted to make and we can just call it shit on the merits. But so when they're coming in here and they're kind of muddying up the waters with Kevin Grudert, I just didn't appreciate it because Grudert has done nothing but show you that he can do this. Saw six is great. This. Saw X is great. Yes, Saw 3D is not great. It's dumb fun, but it's not a good, oh, it's X not a very good movie. Awesome. Saw 6 is awesome. But yes, yeah, 6 and X are very good movies. And so, like, the guy has shown you he can do this and do it well. So, like, I get Don't it. You got a big head. Yeah, but. Don't interfere. Just let him do his thing. Uh, exactly. Yeah, I'm pissed off about The Crow getting delayed, too. And by the I way, Justin. The trailer. Uh, Justin, I just want to say the, the, the buzz out of CinemaCon, cause they showed more footage of it. The uh -huh. buzz was all positive for the crowd. Like all, yes. It was all positive. I really, I couldn't, see it. I really liked the trailer. Damn it. Couldn't find negative reactions for what they showed at CinemaCon. The, the journalists that were there that were giving like, you know, opinions on stuff. They said it, everybody's sentiment was, it looks like it's going to be a no, no holes barred, uh, brutal revenge movie. And it yeah. just looks fun. Yeah. And, I, and I had no problems with the trailer. I really enjoyed the trailer. I thought this is going to be great. Um, I'm excited. Okay. Can, mm -hmm. I want to talk about Nosferatu because we haven't talked yeah. about Nosferatu yet. Yep. They showed the I, first look at that at CinemaCon oh too. Gosh, I'm so excited for that. I think it, it is one of my most anticipated movies of the year. Like, oh, I'm so excited. I'm, I, I love gothic horror, so I'm excited for that. But I heard details about this trailer from like an article I read and oh my gosh, I can't wait. Can't okay. wait. Yeah. I, I heard that from what they, this, the footage they showed at CinemaCon, everybody was raving about Bill Skarsgård's look. As yeah. not, Cause he put, yeah, he's yeah. So he's yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's all practical and everything. I look, and you got a great director behind it. I, you know, is it Eggers? It's Eggers, right? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That comes out Christmas. Comes out Christmas Day. That's my only thing about it. I'm like, oh god. They they <laughs> might they might move it up a week. Don't be surprised. Please, please move it up because I'm like but, I really feel like I don't, doomed. I don't know, Christmas. Justin. You know this is like statistically this is true. Christmas Day is one of the biggest movie going days of the year. That's true, but I I. I mean, my only issue with that is they're going to be like, why are we going to go see Nosferatu on Christmas? Like the audience in general. Yeah. I yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I all, I'll say, all I'll say is I'll be there Christmas day. I mean, I will go see it. I mean, it will be like, yes, I'm seeing it in December, but I, I, I'm like, please do well. It's the only thing do well. Cause my issues with like, films that like dark terminator dark fate say what you want i love the movie my only issue is why did you release that movie in november that movie should not have been a november movie that is a summer film so yeah yeah i mean look i hear you well, well i hope for the best see. I, see what and happens. then uh as far as furiosa i've actually never been a mad max fan because i've never seen any of them so what you've never seen even the last one no you never saw Dude, Fury Road is like just one of the best movies in general. 
I'm excited for for Furiosa. I cannot wait for May. I'm so never excited. seen them, but again, if that's y'all's thing, I'm happy for Dude, you, and I hope it's good. You need to see Fury Road. You don't have to see any of the others. You don't have to, but Fury Road, fucking amazing. Is it? It that is is it like a sequel? It's connected to the other movies, but you don't have to watch the other movies to watch it. It like stand on its own as a film. Okay. It's Tom Hardy, Charlize Theron. Like the movie is amazing. Oh, I know. It's 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 where that meme came from of Tom Hardy going, that's bait. Like where he's yeah. sitting in the car is going, Nope, that's bait. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean dude, yes. Go watch it. I, I probably I probably I probably you will, watch Justin. Fury okay. Watch Fury I, I, oh yeah, uh Christmas. Terrifier three, but it, it's coming out in October, which is weird because it's a Christmas movie. <laughs> But I guess I guess they're playing at hey people will go see it for Halloween and then a week later they'll be in the Christmas spirit and they'll go see it again. It works for both holidays. Yeah, I know. Yeah, George Miller. Yeah, he directed all the Mad Max movies, so that's a director that's stuck by. That's a Christmas movie. Like, <laughs> you never know. You never know what they'll do with Scream Seven. Well, th there were there were rumors that it was going to take place around Christmas time. I'd be down with it. I would not mind that. Uh, yes, I did hear the plot rumors. Uh, it's going to focus on Sydney's family, her two kids, and uh, uh, her Mark. and Mark. Yep. So, and I, I feel like that's that's bound to happen. Obviously, you're not getting any, um, you're not getting any of the the returning uh, people from the last mm -hmm. movie, aside from Courtney Cox. So, you might as well just uh, center it around Sid's family. Uh, you know. Of course I'm going to see Wicked. I was going to say, Justin will be there day one. I will be singing all the songs and everything. When Does like, that come out in December? Yeah, des December or November, one of those. So. That movie's going to be huge. I mean, I'm... I, I Gravity! I, I could care either way, but I know it's going to be huge. It's going to make a lot of money. So. Yeah. so Wicked's a big deal for a lot of people. So, All right, guys. Well, we've yeah. gone over an hour and a half. Um... It was fun to be back, Justin. It was. It was super fun. I had a great time. It was a blast. We, I think we both really needed it. So, Yeah, Lord knows I did. And now you know what I need? A shower. Yeah. I had a I had a brutal day at work. I was busy all day. I didn't look at my oh, phone. Oh, you were yeah, you were working today. I forgot. Oh that. yeah. Yeah. I looked at my phone maybe once, maybe once in the eight hours I was there. I was just it was busy all day. So I uh, got home, ate my Quidoba, and uh, immediately came in here and uh, did this. So now it's time for me to go wash my ass. So uh, to everybody in here. Very thank important you guys. to do that, washing yes, your ass. Yes, it is very important. And so <laughs> all of you that are watching, wash your asses tonight too, um, if you haven't already. Uh, we we love talking to you guys. We love being back. And I'm going to, I'm putting my own feet to the fire. We will be back next week. Yes. We'll be back on Wednesday. Um, yes. And uh, we'll be back Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern. So if you guys want to join us again, you'll know where to find us. Uh, Justin. Queen, what's up? How are you, Queen? How are hello. you? Hello. Well, hello and goodbye. Uh, but I know we're playback. leaving now, but yes. hello. I hope you enjoy our stream. So Yes, yes. And uh, please enjoy the playback. And if you guys are watching on the playback, leave a like. Comment down below. I'm sure the Blumhouse shit is going to be what people take out of this the most. And they're going to be like, oh, my God, fucking Blumhouse, whatever. Or, uh, yeah. We love you guys, and we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.